everyone please wait for just 10 minutes more session chair will come just in a while thank you thank you very much
so in this session this is our session 5 uh, professor nipun mondol is session chair here uh, he is present so professor nipun mondol you can uh, start the session okay uh, i am audible hello hello noim i am audible yes yes you are audible okay mm, okay welcome to all uh, Uh, we can start now noim can start now okay first um, okay um, first paper is paper id is 17 noticeable changes the paper number 5 you can start now i would like okay. to give the result okay uh, 17 is not available then 5 okay. is my screen visible sir hello hello yes it is visible thanks um good afternoon all topic of my presentation is drug type classification using logistic regression and decision tree based machine learning model the paper id is 5 uh, and i am dr ramit chatterjee independent researcher uh, obtained phd from iit indore so this is the content of my presentation that include motivation and problem domain basic theory process flow diagram data set result and discussion conclusions and references <coughs> so healthcare is one of the major industrial sectors that contribute significantly to the to enhance the economy and employment worldwide drugs and medicines are considered as one of the major pillars of healthcare industry this is a vital factor for maintaining health reducing uh, diseases and uh, premature deaths managing uh, diseases and achieving uh, health equity to improve performance and productivity of this sector few research efforts have been uh, conducted utilizing artificial intelligence machine learning deep learning and transfer learning based techniques uh, over uh, past few years uh also in rural rural areas uh providing uh quality health service is still a great challenge to the government due to the various factors like shortage of physicians um uninsured residents uh, lack of infrastructure people could not receive adequate health care facilities so to solve this major social issue in this communication we propose automated prediction of drug type to prescribe Uh, to the patients uh, based on health parameters of the patient uh, using machine learning approach for automated classification we have used two machine learning classifiers that is logistic regression and uh, decision tree classifier uh, the drug 200 data set from kaggle is utilized for analysis and for performance in assessment confusion matrix and accuracy score matrix was used this is a basic theory of our work uh, that firstly include a data splitting because at first we have to split the overall data set so that some sort of training is being performed on the model as well as testing can be done so two type of data sets are there one is training data second one is testing data the training data set is used for uh towards uh training is utilized to generate experiences using which the algorithm learn to respond and test data set is used to estimate the performance of the model in conjunction with performance matrices uh, generally more than 60% of the data is used to train the model and 40% around 40% is used for testing the commonly used ratio of train training and testing is 80 is to 20 uh, 70 is to 30 65 is to 35 and 60 is to 40 So next, the learning model uh, for analysis. We have used two kind of uh, learning models. One is logistic regression. Uh, second one is decision tree. The logistic regression is one of the simplest supervised learning classification algorithm used to predict the probability of the target variable. This algorithm has been used successfully for various classification problems like spam detection, uh, diabetes detection, cancer detection, and others. As you can see from the figure, first. regression model most primitive regression model 
that was utilized um, that was invented in the uh, very earlier stages of machine learning uh, uh, development was linear regression and if we use uh, exponential function to that linear regression we get some sort of logit function that is well suited for classification applications and uh, the next uh, the next uh, model is the decision tree model here uh, this, a tree like structure um, is utilized for classification of different uh, different uh, factors uh, for example in this figure that people have classified um, the ages and they like whether they do some sort of exercises or eat pizza and others in a decision tree model there are few nodes and branches are there the basic node is known as root node from where splitting is have started and the the nodes uh, where uh, splitting have ended are called leaves like this is a confusion matrix uh, these kind of matrices are used for performance assessment it's a summary of prediction results in a classification problem number of correct and incorrect predictions is summarized with count values and broken down by each class so as we can see in the figure there are predicted class and a true class based on true class and predicted class uh, four different kind of predictions can be done one is um, true positive false positive false negative and true negative and from all this uh, matrices accuracy score is evaluated using the formula like true positive plus true negative divided by total so this is the process flow diagram of the proposed strategy that first include acquisition of the data or utilization of the data from some sort of database and the next stage some sort of pre processing and labeling is performed in in ms excel or other labeling softwares and the in third stage data splitting is performed uh, and data is split into training data as well as testing data and the training data is used for learning purpose and the for learning of the model logistic regression and decision tree is utilized next after training the model generalized uh, classification model is um, developed and we in the next step we can test the generalized model using the testing data so this is the data set that we have used from kegel we have uh, five columns of the data set that is age sex bp cholesterol sodium to potassium ratio and type of drug drug and the data type are like integer object object uh, floating point and the drug data type is also an object and the pie chart representation of drug data set based on their cholesterol level uh, sex blood pressure and type of drug is yeah. shown in the next figure and uh, consecutive to uh, figures shows the joint plot representation and bar graph representation of sodium to potassium level and uh, people uh, count value uh, to the sex so for calculations we have used python jupyter notebook version 4.6.4.1 uh, of anaconda navigator uh, in this direction the type of different parameters were, were checked using pandas head library function it was observed from the value of different parameters were categorical so we have used label encoder and fit transform operations to make it uh, numeric uh, so so that machine can understand those values and the next uh, uh, train test plating operation was performed where training and testing ratio was kept as 60 is to 40 two classifiers as we have discussed earlier uh, logistic regression and decision tree were trained using training data and testing was performed upon rest of the data sets towards this classifiers were imported from the respective library logistic regression was imported from sklearn um, dot linear model and decision tree was imported from sklearn dot tree these are the results um, from the results of confusion matrix week and accuracy score metric it is evident that 
logistic regression models performance was around 83% that is 0.8375 uh, and uh, for decision tree the performance uh, metric was around 98.75% that is uh, 0.9875 as uh, shown in the figure so from this comparison it is evident that decision tree algorithm is far more better as compared to logistic regression for drug type classification so in conclusion we have performed drug uh, classification using two uh, uh, two machine learning algorithms overall ml algorithm used for this classification are simple robust and computationally efficient following uh, inferences can also be um, drawn from this investigation the first inference is uh, application of ml for predicting drug type uh, prescribed to the patient depending on different factors is demonstrated for classification logistic regression and decision tree based ml algorithm was utilized a data set for, for classification was imported from kegel a drug 200 data set train test split uh, ratio was kept at uh, 60 to 40 for classification of five different type of drugs logistic regression produced around 83.75% uh, accuracy whereas decision tree produced around 98.75% accuracy hence for multi class classification that is that uh, involve more than two uh, elements classification decision tree algorithm provides uh, better results as compared to binary classification algorithm that is lo logistic regression and these are few references i have utilized to make the presentation and thank you any questions are welcome uh amit very nice presentation thank you sir uh, thank you very much uh any questions from audience no question that means amit we have yes, students two algorithm uh, one is logistic algorithm and another decision tree decision tree right. sir what prediction ha uh, right so the first prediction part part right uh, yes sir which algorithm is better Uh, decision tree algorithm generally is better because logistic regression algorithm was initially designed for binary classification that is if there are two classes only in a data set for example uh, uh, head or tail like if you uh, consider pro probabilistic distribution but if the values are categorical like if you consider a dice the outcome can be six so for those purposes decision tree performed better Okay, okay, very good. Uh, another thing, uh, this algorithm is uh, coded by you or already available or? Uh, so basic structure is available. However, for different kind of uh, data set, we need to modify its structure so that uh, some uh, the data feeding and as well as uh, that uh, categorical modifications are being performed by me. Oh, okay, okay. That means you are. Slightly modified for your uh, use purpose, right? Yes, sir. Very nice, very nice. Okay, thank you, Amit. Uh, your paper you, uh, you. ID five seventeen. Ah, sir, it's five. Okay, five. Right. Okay, five. Right. Sure. Nice. Uh, we will move uh, for next paper presenter. Paper ID ten. Okay, uh, Amit, sir. you can. Ah, uh, sir, that paper also belongs to me. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> you can continue okay. okay okay sir thank you okay so uh, is this screen visible sir yes yes so okay thanks uh, so the next topic that we are going to discuss here is paper id 10 uh, disease detection and classification of medicinal leaves using digital image features and random forest technique so these are the content of my presentation um, the content is more or less similar uh, okay, okay okay so this is the mo motivation of my work uh, firstly agriculture as uh, if you consider agriculture is one of the prime industrial sectors where industry 4.0 can be implemented extensively agriculture industry in india is remarkably pointed out as sunrise sector which accounts for nearly 18% of india's gdp this sector points for immense growth and greater contribution to asian as well as world food trends however productivity of different crops crops in rural area is significantly 
hampered due to disease and infections generated by various bacteria, fungus, and pathogens. Hence, disease detection for crop needs significant research effort to improve agricultural productivity. Uh, this, for disease detection, in past, various techniques was utilized that include optical coherence tomography, biospectral analysis, uh, spectroscopic techniques, hyperspectral imaging, um, and many other. However, all those techniques were complex, expensive, time-consuming, required scientific expertise, and susceptible towards environmental perturbations. Hence, to increase profitability of this industry, there is a need to simple automated technique for to perform those tasks. So, to supplement the drawback of Previously available techniques in this work, uh, digital image features and random forest based machine learning classifier technique was used. Data corresponding to fresh and diseased leaf samples for two different classes of uh, medicines, or oh, sorry, medicinal leaves, namely uh, basil and periwinkle, were utilized to train the model. Confusion matrix and sim uh, similar accuracy score matrix was utilized to. Um, to understand the accuracy of yes sir hello motivation slide of slide is moving or not yes sir i'm sorry your slide is now motivation slide yes sir yes sir okay 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 it's motivation slide only okay 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 um so since similar to the uh, pre previous work confusion matrix and accuracy score matrix uh, uh, techniques were used to assess the performance of the machine learning model. So this is the basic theory that I have already discussed that include firstly data okay. splitting, training and testing of the data and next feature extraction. This thing is uh, slightly different as uh, from the previous work. Here we have used digital image features like we have taken a snap of the leaf image uh, of the leaf and using digital image processing technique we have extracted its features so the first technique that we have employed here is top top hat filtering top hat filtering is um, basically a low pass filter where uh, top hat transform operation extract details and balance the overall luminescence of the given image the transform is used for various process processing tasks including background equalization image enhancement, feature extraction, and many more. The class of the filters in this transform are built using several Fourier space or radial space low pass filter functions. The name top hat was originated from the hat-like shape of the filter where uh, when observed in domain in which filter function is designed. Uh, this image is somehow we have designed top hat filtering time domain and Calculated its Fourier spectra of the image and multiplied this this filter function and extracted its features. Next, the feature extraction. For feature extraction, we have defined two different image features. First feature is intensity feature. Second feature is contrast feature. Intensity feature or intensity parameter indicates the overall exposure. That is a pixel saturation or underexposure by interfering the pixel values of the speckle images. Mathematically, in, it is expressed as m equals to mean of mean of the image, that is i of x, y. If the pixel values of the grayscale image are towards 0, that is under exposure, or 255, that is over exposure, image properties cannot be traced very properly. So, uh, at the time of clicking the image, we need to take care of this factor, that the image is neither overly saturated or under saturated. The next feature is contrast feature. This feature can be defined as a difference in luminescence that makes representation in an image is uh, distinguishable. And as compared to absolute luminescence, human visual system is more sensitive to contrast. Contrast estimates the integration of luminescence and is calculated using C equals to uh, Standard deviation of the pixel values to the mean of the pixel values. This ratio is termed as the contrast. Now, next, the learning model. Uh, 
in this work we have used random forest based learning model uh, in our previous work we have um, discussed about decision tree algorithm that is used for multi class classification but if the data is somehow image type or if there are extensive real life experimentation is involved uh, only decision tree based algorithm cannot work very properly hence uh, over the years researchers have modified that approach and develop a new approach that approach is termed as random forest algorithm in random forest uh, n number of decision tree are cascaded one by one and for, from each decision tree our classification score is generated after generation of the classification score majority voting or averaging is being performed to generate final result uh, as this uh, algorithm use n number of decision tree its accuracy increases considerably so this is a confusion matrix and accuracy score matrix this portion is similar to my previous work and this is uh, the process flow diagram where firstly raw data is acquired and pre processing and filtering that uh, top hat filtering and feature extraction image based feature extraction was performed on the agricultural data next we are data splitting was performed and training data was used to train the model and finally cla uh, finalized the, uh, classification model was generated and in the last step to assess the accuracy of the model testing data was utilized so this is the data set that we have created uh, for classification operation to medicinal leaves named basil uh, Osmium basilum and periwinkle uh, were used. Um, images of two fifty fresh and infected leaves for each plant group were captured using Samsung M thirty mobile camera. Uh, the specification of that camera is thirteen megapixel sensor with f by one point nine aperture lens, five megapixel uh, wide angle shooter with f by two point two aperture. The first figure shows four uh, basil leaf. basil leaves uh, the first figure is of a uh, fresh basil leaf and the uh, next three figures represent uh, infected basil leaf and the next uh, figure in the next figure uh, the first image shows the peri uh, periwinkle leaf that is the fresh periwinkle leaf and next uh, next three that that's b c and g uh, these leaves represent infected periwinkle leaves so this is the results for our in investigation first those periwinkle leaves were uh, converted into gray scale and then we have performed top hat filtering from image a and b it is very clear that after it utilizing top hat filtering its intensity uh, distribution uh, is somehow uniform as compared to the preceding figure the next a 3d intensity distribution of uh, the image is shown in the next consecutive uh, next consecutive images where the first image shows a gray scale leaf in 3d where we we can see that uh, the background background portion is somehow have very higher intensity as compared to the leaf structure itself that is shown from uh, shown using a red color and after top hat filtering the background is suppressed somehow and next the table is there to uh, distinctively define the fact uh, different factors like for fresh basil leaf and the mean intensity was in the range of 55 to around uh, 45 to 65 this is just one representation and the contrast value was around uh, 0.36 to 0.31 and for infected leaves Uh, the mean intensity value was around 100 to 115, and contrast value was around 0.10 to 0.17. And similar distinctive, uh, similar distinction was observed for periwinkle leaves too. And next, uh, this is the confusion matrix for basil leaf and periwinkle leaf. Like after extracting all those features, image features, we have fed those features to. the machine learning algorithm 
uh, that is random forest based algorithm and for both the cases we have uh, observed the confusion matrices where the first matrix correspond to basal leaf and the second uh, matrix correspond to periwinkle leaf the random forest classifier was trained using the training data and testing was performed uh, on rest of the data set towards this classifier was uh, imported from sklearn.ensemble library like for uh, decision tree the library was sklearn.tree and for uh, random forest the library was sklearn.ensemble next instance of the classifier was created and the fitting was accomplished using uh, independent training data set that is xtrain and dependent training data set that is y train for testing of the model predict method was utilized for performance evaluation of the model confusion matrix as we can see here is um, was calculated and confusion from confusion matrix results we have also uh, acquired um, the accuracy score the score was 91% for basal leaf and 89% for periwinkle leaf so in conclusion uh, for prediction of leaf quality a combination of machine learning digital image filtering feature extraction techniques was utilized random forest based ml uh, algorithm was used for performing uh, classification operation the data set used for classification was acquired using rgb imaging device for splitting train and test data set the ratio was kept uh, 3 is to 2 uh, for classification of fresh and infected class of basal leaf classification accuracy was 91% whereas for periwinkle leaf it was 89% so these are few references that i have used to make this presentation and thank you that's all for um, today's presentation any questions are welcome thanks uh, okay now again uh, nice presentation amit any questions from audience okay no question uh, very nice amit Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, sir. Uh, I have no question. Very nice. Uh, uh, we'll move the next paper presenter. Uh, thirty-eight. Paper ID thirty-eight. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Oh, good afternoon. You can start. Take the time. Ten minutes. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> sir, it is visible, sir. Okay, with right. Uh, now visible. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> good afternoon, sir. Uh, to, uh, uh, today I'm going to present a paper on analysis of biological behavior of epoxy based chopped carbon fiber composite using Taguchi technique. Uh, in this uh, uh, work, I generally I focus on the to analyze the impact of various design elements. on the we are characteristics of the composites and here i have investigated the influence on tribological behavior of chopped carbon fiber epoxy composite three i have considered a three design factor like a normal load sliding speed carbon fiber content of the composite so today uh, the material designing today is shifted from monolithic to composite material because of the various characteristics like weight reduction low cost better quality corrosion resistance and good performance in a structural material and therefore the rapid progress in uh, uh, application and industry created a distinction between the demands of available material and advanced application and and because of that it is very very important to develop a new material with upgrade property to fulfill the requirement so in that composite material have great perspective as a substitute product for a metal based one as polymer based composite require less maintenance low cost have good tribological property possess longer durability <coughs> compared to traditional material so <coughs> composite material generally we can find uh widely uh, employed in today technical disciplines like uh, marine uh, industry automobile industry aircraft industry defense drilling biomedical uh, industry 
etc because of the high specific strength high resistance to corrosion high specific modulus and low weight so kind of fiber resins used fiber weight or volume percent fiber orientation and other parameters all have an impact on me uh, mechanical as well as tribological property of the composite material so they are the various fiber like the glass fiber uh, carbon fibers uh, natural fiber but here i have taken i just uh, chopped reinforcement i just chopped a carbon fiber and matrix at epoxy araldite ly556 uh, with hardener HY951 and they used as a matrix material in this study and to initiate the appropriate mixing and exothermic reaction. So, Araldite LY556 was mixed with uh, hardener HY951 in 10 is to 1 proportion and stirred for about uh, 20 minutes. And the fabrication is done uh, with the hand layer method in different contents of fiber reinforcement and we can see this is the details of the composite sample uh, sample what i have prepared so uh, this is the preparation of the composite so the level uh, i have chosen like normal load uh, unit is newton uh, 20 uh, 20 newton 30 newton and 40 newtons sliding a speed 0 0.6 meter per second 0 0.8 meter per second and 1 meter per second and the fiber contain uh, it varies from 30 to 50, um, 30 percent, 40 percent, and 50 percent. And uh, after the epoxy is lapped on the chopped carbon fiber uniformly, the full assembly is squeezed in a uh, hydraulic press and kept at room temperature for 20 minutes, uh, 20 hours to allow uh, the surplus resins to entirely eliminate the entrapped air bubbles. And after that, post curing is done. Uh, so, uh, at ambient temperature uh, for 30 hours after demolding of the composites. <clears throat> and the basic objective of this paper to use the ANOVA technique to find the most significant parameter by <clears throat> examining at the influence of process variable like load, or speed of this slide, content of the fiber, mostly on wear and friction behavior of carbon fiber epoxy composite. So uh, this is the uh, friction and wear test were conducted using a rotating pin on this tribometer under dry sliding condition. So Taguchi technique uh, is, uh, has been used and which is one of the most widely used for improving the efficiency of various mechanical uh, and tribological property. And uh, the Allen orthogonal array was selected to gen and with the understanding that degree of freedom of orthogonal array must be greater than or equal to the total wear criteria and the wear rate and <coughs> coefficient of friction were the response variables to be investigated and the test were carried out according to the run sequence of Taguchi model and thus the results are obtained. So generally, the experimental data was analyzed with the help of uh, Minitab 18 program. And generally, it is built for the analysis of experimental data and transport to signal to noise ratio. And in the existence of uh, noise, the SN ratio will determine how the predictable product or process is. And generally, uh, for the wear rate and coefficient of friction based on the smaller is better uh, uh, has been chosen based on the, this principle and calculated using a logarithmic conversion of the gradient cassette. And this is the um, formula which has been used S by N, signal to noise ratio is nothing but minus 10 log 1 upon T, summation of 1 is equal to 1 to T R I square. Now, these are the various parameter level and this W load V velocity F B C E fiber contain and W R is V R rate and S N R A after uh, putting this value code from the uh, experimental data and after the experimental data when we have run in the uh, mini tab uh, for the <coughs> we got S N R A one four V R rate and this all data we have calculated and this is the value of coefficient of friction which has been run for various parameter 
and leave work uh, in experimentally. Then after allowing in mini tab analysis and overall analysis, we got the SNRA2. These all are the value for we can see here. Now, <coughs> this is the yeah, graph for real yeah, yeah. So this is the means of Hello? Hello? Audible, audible. Darwando, continue, continue. Yes, sir. Sir, this is after analyzing these Taguchi design. I will I got a graph like this, and in this graph, which is plotted for means of means in previous case. So this is the peak point adding the corresponding level and dividing by the three why are we dividing the three here because we have selected uh, we have chosen the here three level only so we have divided the corresponding value by three and we get at this graph so similarly the low value is completed and based upon that all the value like between we can found it here from 0 0.003 to 0 0.008 for <coughs> Uh, for various parameters like load, sliding speed, and fiber content. And this is the graph which has been plotted for the SN ratio, signal to noise ratio. And the plotted value we got, we got from the 42 to 50. Uh, the between the value got from 42 between to 50. And signal to noise is uh, is the framed by Taguchi and we have to have we have to reduce the noise and it should be close to zero level whether it is positive or negative so here we have chosen signal to noise a smaller is better why i have chosen the smaller is better because the wear rate and the coefficient of friction should be minimum as to minimum now and this is the ANOVA table, what we have got it. So the, uh, this is the uh, DF is nothing but degree of freedom. S U key, uh, as sequence, SS is nothing but sum of sequence, sum of a square. Uh, ADJ, SS is adjusted, sum of a square. ADJ, MS, adjusted, mean of a square. F is <coughs> interpreter F. So DF, so how we got uh, devalued uh, D of DF is two, as a two. So Total the parameter is three and three minus one uh, is two. Uh, so the higher degree of freedom load is a two, sliding a speed two, a fiber content two, and the total is uh, total parameter to, uh, we have seen from the, when we have seen in this here that the total parameter is nine. So nine minus one is eight. So total total uh, degree of freedom is eight. So a two plus two plus two minus two will get the eight minus six is we will get the residual error. So this is the sequence uh, sum of the sequence uh, what we have got it after the calculation using the ANOVA and uh, <coughs> this is the factor. Uh, so interpreted F value. So how we got the this integrated F value. So sequence SS divided by residual error. We got the F, uh, interpreted F value. Now so total the total value is 92.8350. So low, after this, we have to choose from here, which is the highest value. So we can see here uh, in comparison to the sum of the square and uh, mean of the square. So 85.0130 divided by total value 92.8350. So we got it as a 91.57%. Similarly for the sliding speed and fiber content. And similarly for the residual error. So we can see here the load 91.57% is the most influence factor that uh, in for determining the VR rate followed by the residual error, fiber content and sliding a speed. Similarly, this is the response table, uh, response table of VR rate has been drawn by using with the help of uh, as <coughs> an graph. So we can see here, and from here, mostly we can find out that uh, this is the delta value, and this is the rank, and the rank is <coughs> a delta is nothing but maximum minus minimum. We can see here the maximum for the load is uh, level one is forty nine point eight seven, and the minimum is forty two point three seven. After subtracting these two value, we will get the uh, seven point five three. I just 7.53. This is the delta. Similarly, for the sliding speed and fiber content. And from here, we can find out this from the delta. We can see that the most influencing factor is the load, then fiber content, then sliding speed. Similarly, 
the graph of the means of the means for coefficient of graph uh, coefficient of friction has been plotted using the uh, antagochi analysis and we can see here the value means of means uh, is in between of 0.6 to 0.72 for the load and 0.6 to 0 0.68 uh, for the sliding speed and whereas for the fiber contain 0.62 to 0.68 <coughs> these are most uh, the means of means value pointed now this is the graph for sn ratio for the coefficient of friction where yeah, it is uh, from nearby 2 to 4.6 for the load and the value corresponding value comes under 2 to 4.6 and the, similarly for the sliding speed and the fiber content weight ratio and these all are the analysis ANOVA analysis of SN ratio has been found using the uh, soft uh, with the help of ANOVA analysis mm -hmm. and we can find out here the sequence as a uh, sequence of sum of a square value. Yes sir. What we say uh, you can keep this next year time is okay sir okay. so then after that the regression equation has been calculated the wear rate so wear rate as these are the, the constant value and it mainly depend on the factor like load sliding speed and fiber content weight ratio on calculating we can get it the uh, regression sequence is as a 90.50 and as a adjoint 84.7 and and predicted 61.34 similarly for the coefficient of friction we we calculated over here then confirmation test sir <coughs> so confirmation test uh, actually uh, uh, is the final stage of the tagochi analysis and where tagochi analysis was performed to discover the best value of parameter in above table which in a previous slide which i have mentioned and the confirmation test were conducted using the arbitrary mixture of variable with a3 b3 c3 representing the wear rate and a3 b3 c2 representing the coefficient of friction and these are the two equations which has been used for the wear rate and coefficient of friction uh, respectively used to calculate the projected s by n ratio so from here this table we can compares the expected wear rate and frictional force to uh, to the observed response and difference between the actual and anticipated uh, SN ratio value is computed and uh, the wear rate has been pro uh, has been predicted error as a 6.829% while the friction coefficient uh, has been uh, computed as 5.016% and this demonstrate that the anticipated value are accurate. So, calculation. So, in this work, the study primary purpose was to fabricate the composite of chopped carbon fiber, epoxy composite. And further, uh, tribological testing was carried out. Uh, then, the Tagochi design of experiment was used to examine the COF and dry sliding wear of uh, epoxy composite under various weight and sliding speeds. And it has been found that the applied load influenced the wear rate and uh, coefficient of friction by 91.57% and 68.66% respectively. And the SN ratio was computed using the best testing parameter for wear rate and coefficient of friction and found that anticipated and observed that both wear rates and coefficient of friction were almost identical. Thank you, sir. Okay. Mm, nice presentation, uh, Dharmendo. Thank any you. question from audience? Uh, any question from audience? Okay, Dharmendra, um, you go to your uh, table number one or two. Ask the question most probably. Uh, yes, not not uh, not just the, uh, right right experimental parameter. Uh, I understand that you have chosen three. Uh, parameter and there are three level of variation that means you choose uh, uh, half not full factorial uh, L9 octagonal array yes sir. then you perform on the experimental uh, work then input this experimental data in ANOVA uh, military then uh, analysis have been performed right yes sir okay and uh, find out the influence uh, parameter which parameter is most influence right yes sir so, so my question is um, 
कुछ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ पैरामीटर इज सपोज मिनिमम योर ऑयर रेट और समथिंग सर एक्चुअली सर लोड इज द मोस्ट प्रीमिडोमिनेंट फैक्टर व्हिच इज अफेक्टिंग ऑन वियर रेट एज वेल एज द कोफिशिएंट ऑफ द फ्रिक्शन and then for the wear rate fiber content is there and the sliding as sliding as speed so we can see so as i have mentioned the, over here one, one is l9 l uh, second table second table uh, experimental l9 yes sir right right l9 uh, in which combination you can say in which parameter is most affecting for the uh, wear rate or something Yeah. Wire rate like or in this sir, we can see the sir twenty newton load zero point eight ah zero point eight meter per second with forty percent of fiber. Uh, fiber, the wear rate influence more sir. We can see at the highest value for the wear rate is fifty one point two four four nine nine signal to noise ratio. Okay, okay. And whereas, mm. and whereas for the <clears throat> for the coefficient of friction the load uh, we can see here this slide sir uh, mm -hmm. this slide sir only 5 point so 20 newton load 0.6 uh, meter per second with 30% of velocity uh, means fiber content it influences 5.325785 sir okay that means okay fm r1 हेलो नेक्स्ट पेपर आईडी इज थर्टी एट सर थर्टी एट नाइन थर्टी एट नो तुम्हारे थर्टी एट ये सर फोर्टी नाइन सॉरी सॉरी फोर्टी नाइन फोर्टी नाइन सॉरी फोर्टी नाइन हेलो सर हाँ हाँ यू कैन स्टार्ट यू कैन स्टार्ट ये सर आई एम जस्ट I hope my presentation is visible. Visible, but color is very difficult. Okay, 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 okay. Ha, huh. okay. Oh. So, ah, okay, okay. Now. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'm here to discuss about the formation of tumor cell with variation of extracellular matrix density and cytoskeleton. material properties change so my objective is to generate a finite element model of a tumor cell which is surrounded by extracellular matrix components and to observe the stress strain behavior on cellular components when a strain is applied on the uh, ecm or extracellular matrix and also to observe the response of the cell with variation of extracellular matrix density as well as cytoskeleton material properties so uh, the major uh, stress bearing uh, or load bearing structure of the cell is cytoskeleton and the uh, extracellular matrix is the complex mesh work of proteins and carbohydrates which is surrounded by the cell and helps in cell uh, migration cell proliferation and cell to cell uh, signaling etc so the major components of a cell is uh, cyto uh, cytoskeleton and actin filaments microtubules and intermediate filaments are the major elements of cytoskeleton so you can see the images of actin microtubule and intermediate fil filaments and the coming to extracellular matrix major components are proteoglycans collagen fibers and proteins uh, which include fibronectin laminin etc so our major focus uh, so i have designed a model 
in ANSYS. So I'll be considering uh, only collagen fibers in my model. So collagen fiber is a collection of collagen fibrils, which is a collection of collagen molecules. And each coll collagen molecule uh, constitutes of uh, several helix uh, alpha chains. And these alpha chains contain uh, amino acids. So coming to the working methodology, I have used the uh, mechanical properties of the following uh, components uh, from the references from the from the references: cytoplasm, microtubule, like actin filament, intermediate filament, nucleus, collagen fiber, and blood. So cytoplasm is a component which covers the, the entire cell other than nucleus. So in my modeling, I have uh, considered four cell divisions of a tumor, a tumor cell that is 16 cells. And 16 cells are surrounded by six normal cells, healthy cells. And entire thing is uh, present in the extracellular matrix. So in the ANSYS software, I have used beam elements for modeling actin filaments, microtubules, intermediate filaments, and for the cell membrane, which covers the outer portion of the cell with shell element, and the cytoplasm, which covers the entire cell other than these four uh, things with solid element. Uh, this is the picture of a single cell. You can see how uh, the actin filaments, microtubules, and intermediate filaments are arranged. And coming to the extracellular matrix, we'll be having a collagen fiber and blood. So collagen fiber is modeled as a beam, uh, beam element and blood is modeled as solid element. So my, uh, I have varied some properties like collagen volume fraction property and uh, percentage of cytoskeleton uh, mechanical properties. We have uh, uh, read from the literature that uh, the can cancerous cell degrade itself. Like compared to normal cell, there will be a, a less stiffness uh, for the cancer cell. I mean, tumor cell. So, uh, and uh, as well as uh, decrease in the mechanical properties of the cytoskeleton, we have also observed that. Uh, tumor uh, gives signals such that uh, the surrounding extracellular matrix stiffness increases. That is because of uh, increase in number of collagen. So we have uh, did it parallelly, like increasing the collagen volume fraction and decreasing the mechanical properties of the cytoskeleton simultaneously. I have considered five variations. And collagen, uh, we in the... In the body, collagen will be in different diameters. So I have considered uh, uh, 75, 100, 125, and 150 nanometer radius of collagen. So I have 20 uh, varieties of models, and I have uh, applied load. So as, as the tumor, uh, we move from the tumor, the collagen volume fraction decreases. So surrounding the tumor, will have more density of collagen. So I have designed my model in such a way that surrounding the tumor, my collagen is 100% and to some extent 80, farther 60, 40 and 20. So these are the values for one of the model of 150 nanometer dia. So initially I'll be creating so many collagen fibers and then uh, according to the adequate uh, required amount i'll be removing the other collagen fibers coming to the loading uh, five percent strain is applied on the nodes lying uh, on the right side of the cube uh, i'll show the diagram so strain is applied on this portion and uh, the bottom portion is constrained in all directions and the side three sides are constrained in ux and uz directions the top portion is free and all the 
nodes inside the model are constrained in rotation. So this is the time strain plot I have taken. So we have seen that uh, the accumulation of plastic deformation due to cyclic loading is very significant. That in four cycles of 5% uh, strained amplitude loading, cells can suffer, suffer a huge deformation. And once the cyclic load reaches the plastic zone, each subsequent uh, loading cycle enhances the cumulative accumulated strain in each cycle leading to the change of uh, change of the shape of the cell so it can be concluded that cyclic loading plays a vital role in the shape change of the cells and to achieve cell migration uh, the percentage of deformation is also dependent on the mechanical properties and surface properties of the substrates so it is observed that cells undergo more deformation as the collagen volume fraction increases around the cells. It is also observed that cells undergo more deformation when the uh, radius, uh, when the collagen diameter is increasing. So this is one of the image uh, taken from the results. It is corresponding to 0 0.015 collagen volume fraction of a 150 uh, radius, I'm sorry, radius uh, of collagen. So, uh, Future plan of work can be uh, cyclic sinusoidal strain can be applied. And I have considered four cell divisions. Uh, so we can consider more number of cell divisions. And in the actual condition, the arrangement of cytoskeleton is dynamic and it aligns with the force direction. Uh, so actual dynamic model can also be considered for future work. So these, these are the references I have used. Thank you. Okay. Uh, nice presentation. Any question from audience? Uh, I have questions. Uh, audible? Yes, sir. Yes, you sir. are, you are uh, present for 2D beam elements, right? Yes, sir. And performing and, and she is APDL or work uh, APDL, sir. Okay. It is possible uh, to 3D analysis or something? Sir? Possible? 3D? 3D? You are uh, choosing 2D? 3D is possible? Yes, sir. Uh, I have shown the 3D model only. Just a second, I'll share. So, this is my model, 3D model. Okay, okay. This is your uh, 3D model. The beam elements. Uh, so these are oh, the beam, beam elements. elements. These are oh, the, beam the beam elements, elements I'm using. Uh, we'll form a okay. 3D mesh network. Okay, 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 okay. And boundary condition? Uh, boundary conditions are this. Like strain is applied on one side of the uh, cube and other three sides are constrained in uh, horizontal directions. They can move uh, in the vertical direction. I mean the nodes and the bottom okay. surface is constrained in all directions because we have okay. a, a circular like cell is in circular shape we have assumed so there mm -hmm. will be rotation uh, miscomplications so we, I have constrained uh, rotation for all the nodes okay. I mean I have used shell elements and beam elements so I have constrained uh, rotations in all directions for all the nodes. Okay. Okay, understand. Nice, nice. Uh, nice. Uh, so we move to next uh, paper. Paper ID is 52. Hello. Uh, paper ID 52. I am here, sir. I pay. I will pay, sir. Okay, okay. So join. Uh, okay, you can start. Take time. 10 minutes. Okay. Sir, is my slide visible? Ah, uh, visible. You check just slide moving or not? So moving. Ah, uh, right. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. You, you can start. Good, good afternoon, sir. My name is Sujay Vishas. I recently passed out M Tech from Olana Abul Kalam Azad University of Technology, West Bengal, in the Department of Industrial Engineering and Management. Today, I am going to present my second presentation. That is. 
analyzing the barrier for the implementation of industry 4.0 in indian dd industry and ism migmac approach paper number is 52 this is my content slide so first i introduce to um, indian dd sector then um, industry 4.0 then come my objective of research part then literature review then research gap then research methodology then result and discussion then conclusion uh, then further scope of research and references so this is my introduction slide so in india plays a key role for milk production in uplift of rural and socio economy in case of milk production india is the greatest milk producer and purchaser across the globe india has um, produced total 67% milk and other dairy products which help to live and livelihood for indian rural household in million of dairy farms have developed all over the india the dairy animal population of india is uh, the largest across the world through uh, the milk production and um, and animal population and this is uh, this is the industry 4.0 introduction slide so what is industry 4.0 industry 4.0 basically uh, the fourth industrial revolution uh, which is ongoing transformation in case of industrial sector um, or we can say uh, it is a smart manufacturing technique in industrial uh, in uh, industry 4.0 there are nine um, pillars that are additive manufacturing big data and analytics advanced robotics industrial internet of things the cloud simulation cyber security horizontal and verbal system uh, integration and augmented reality these uh, pillars are very important for industry 4.0 implementation for any uh, other industries like um, like textile industry and uh, manufacturing industry etc then come my objective part so in this work my objective is to identify the important barrier for uh, implementing industry 4.0 in indian dairy industry next to identify the mutual relationship between the barriers uh, then to identify the driving and dependence power of the barriers uh, to implement the industry 4.0 this is the re uh, relevant literature uh, for my topic so according to the all references in this slide i uh, ism fuzzy micmac approach has been increasingly used by various researchers for identifying the key barriers to implementing the industry 4.0 in different industries researchers promote this tool is a best decision making tool for identifying the significant barrier for manufacturing industries textile industry mining industry coal industry etc and according to the all references in this slide uh, many of the researchers um, implement uh, this technique for uh, their uh, uh, smes means uh, small medium enterprises uh, for identifying the significant barrier to implement industry 4.0 uh, in new zealand uh, most of the dairy firms uh, install this automation technique for uh, improve in, for improving their productivity and quality purpose with the help of this um, uh, smart technique smart technique they will be get benefited uh, and uh, with the help of this uh, is uh, industry 4.0 uh, implementation they work uh, with automatic cup removal automatic milk quality assessment and card settlement process etc and now i coming to uh, research gap part so based on literature study i found one paper the title of the paper is benchmarking the interaction among barriers in dairy supply chain and ism approach basically in this paper the author identified the eight barriers the name of the barriers are wastage due to leakage of soft floor high product uh, production downline outdated technology etc but they did not work on the implementation of industry 4.0 in indian dairy industry and the number of barriers could be extended hence in my paper uh, work i address greater number of barriers for implementing industry 4.0 in indian dairy industry and i also work with um, identifying the significant barriers next i come with uh, methodology part so ism uh, methodology first proposed by warfield in the year of 1974 it is the uh, best uh, decision making tool for identifying the relationship between the barriers uh, and in in ism methodology there are uh, 
several steps like SSIM, IRM, FRM, um, label partitioning, and um, ISM based model making. So, this is my flowchart diagram. So, first I study some uh, literature review. Uh, with the help of literature review, I collect some barriers. Then I physically visit some DRD industries like Metro DRD Barasat, Mother DRD Dankuni, and nearest DRD firm in my home. And with the help of some uh, expert suggestion, they identify the uh, they identify some barriers which are uh, the relevant for my topic. And then I apply ISM MIGMAC technique with the help of uh, several uh, steps. I previously I explained and then I come my conclusion part. So uh, this is the first step. Sujay, Hello. Sujay, quick cover. Quick cover. Okay. Sorry, sir. Yeah, quick, quick cover. Okay, 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 quick. sir. This is the uh, first step of SSN. There is four symbol. With the help of this symbol, I make this table. And uh, after uh, implementation SSIM, then I implement IRM with the help of this uh, symbol that is V, A, X, and O. Uh, I converted this symbol with binary number that is 0 and 1, then I make this table. Next part is FRM. Uh, with the help of previous table that is IRM, I implement this table uh, with the help of transitivity rule, the rule uh, which are showing in this slide uh, and the, uh, the, uh, with uh, the symbol basically I use that is star or we can say it is a one star rule. And next come to the label, partic uh, label partitioning part. So label uh, partitioning uh, is a uh, interpretive process. Uh, reachability head uh, is the row value of the one uh, and one star uh, in the FRM. And uh, the number of value one is placed marginally column wise in FRM is placed at uh, antecedent set. So with the help of this previous uh, previous table that is uh, level, uh, level partitioning, I make uh, ISM based model uh, from uh, bottom to top with the help of arrow representation. So now I come to MIGMAC analysis. So with the help of MIGMAC analysis, I, uh, I, uh, I calculate the uh, driving and dependence power of the all barriers uh, and um, which of the barriers are come which cell. Uh, uh, with the help of MIGMAC analysis, I predict this, um, this barrier uh, level and with the help of MIGMAC analysis, I, uh, I calculate uh, that barrier 1, uh, barrier 4 and barrier 7 are the main barriers for implementing industry 4.0 uh, in Indian DRD industry. Now come the result and discussion part. Uh, so they are uh, in MIGMAC analysis, um, the autonomous barrier that is shortage of government subsidy uh, and my final conclusion uh, conclusion part is um, with the help of MIGMAC analysis, uh, the shortage of financial support that is barrier one, which are the most significant barriers for the ISM MIGMAC techniques that is come from MIGMAC analysis. And uh, additionally, uh, unavailability, unavailability of skilled and qualified staff and lack of vision um, are the uh, implemented uh, at the implemented barrier that may be considered as one of the most effective barriers for the implementation of industry 4.0 further scope of this research uh, further studies can be extended using the number of barriers for greater number of experts so that the research uh, research work can be broadened and uh, next i use fuzzy uh, anal uh, fuzzy ahp technique for uh, OHH calculation and uh, next part I uh, work with implementation part and these are the references so any questions are welcome thank you hello 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 Ha, 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 ha. Very nice, very nice presentation. Any questions from audience? Hello. Okay. Hello. Ha, ha. Omit. Omit. Uh, Omit. Uh, sir, um, first of all, it's a very nice presentation. Like the work, the calculations, somehow, like it's a huge amount of calculation involved in this paper. And uh -huh. as uh, overall work is uh, based on uh, matrix manipulation operations. So, what are the <coughs> 
softwares that can be utilized for this um, ca- calculations like there are like different softwares like matlab python uh, multisim and scilab mm-hmm. octave like what exactly are the softwares that can be utilized uh, for this cal- uh, for uh, making this calculation e- even faster like do you have any ideas here actually mm-hmm. i uh, work with ism hello yes actually i work with ism mic technique but uh, in future i work with matlab or uh, any uh, python programming for implementing this ideas but uh, recently i don't have any ideas for uh, implementing uh, this uh, industry 4.0 implementation like somehow what you have done it have a huge impact on like recent government initiatives like digital india startup india because if uh, people are uh, able to distinguish different kind of barriers it is very like it will be uh, like easier for them uh, mm. to um, c- overcome the problems mm. so it's a very nice approach indeed so please try to uh, think over the automated automated applications like yes. somehow now you are doing manual calculations that is great Yes. but yes. with automation things will be like somehow better e- even better yes 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 um very nice suggestion uh, try to incorporate uh, sujoy okay okay sir okay sir okay uh, now we will move the next paper paper number is 17 paper number 17 you can press uh, right you can present Yes, hello colleagues and congratulations from Ukraine. Okay. Okay, you can now start your presentation. Okay. Can you see my presentation? Yes, it is visible. Yes. Okay. Let's start. My name is Katerina Kraus and uh, I am associate professor from Boris Grinchenko Kyiv University and the topic of my presentation is innovation of entrepreneurship in virtual reality digital duplicates internet of things and robotics In modern business in Ukraine are widely used uh, technologies of information uh, trial system internet advertising and sale of goods on internet electronic payments electronic tenders electronic card payments and more others the concept of digital twining has already become wide speed in industrial production but its benefits uh, uh, for the logistic industry are just in beginning to show for example dhl in its next generation wireless logistic review uh, identified digital twining as a new direction for growth Digital duplicate is useful where access to main system uh, is difficult or uh, impossible or it is costly. Digital uh, double allows to reduce as much as possible the wait time at natural test. During the fourth industrial revolution, digital duplicates became part um, of the perfect storm uh, that uh, combined the Internet of Things, robots. Uh, Uh, artificial intelligence and automation digital duplicates uh, is a virtual copy of a physical product processes or ecosystem it is used to create a simulation that can be updated and changed to a greater extent in the real world and to reflect any actions uh, that occur with a physical object in today's business environment the principle of digitalization of business are as following interoperability operation interaction integration uh, virtualization decentralization real time interaction server, uh, service um, orientation uh, modularity training and continuous professional education synergy and emergency so it is not surprising Uh, that the concept of digital duplicates uh, is uh, attributes uh, uh, to uh, fourth industry and digitalization of production the origin of this concept or in change much um, elsen uh, the 200s and 10s 
However, since uh, 210, um, when the uh, temp big data uh, appeared, uh, the popularity of uh, CALS PLM uh, has been uh, rapidly declined. The consumption of virtual production is uh, embodied in the form of a digital double because it is from the second half of 2010 that uh, computer power allowed to create almost uh, identical uh, copies of real physical objects and processes in real time. Digital duplicates are created on the basis of a specialized platform. Such platforms are manufactured by both global funds such as uh, Siemens and uh, the South Systems and small companies such as Excel Go. Digital Enterprise offers uh, tangible benefits uh, through the operation of digital duplicates, with, uh, which are a virtual representation of uh, uh, the actual system. The creation of a digital duplicate um, takes place uh, at the digital stage uh, of a new system. After that, the, as uh, uh, the object is um, completely uh, designed, uh, a static model, a model uh, of digital dual dive device is created uh, on the basis of CAD models uh, in the CAD system or 3D models of objects. Uh, it uh, essentially uh, describe the uh, architecture of uh, object, uh, the location of the system equipment in the workspace. In the next stage, the static model comes to life, describes uh, the workflows uh, moving to a dynamic model system. This is not just a visualization of uh, uh, what is happening in the system. A digital dual must um, reproduce systematic control in the same way uh, as a physical system. Uh, in order to write algorithms uh, for controlling digital dual devices, uh, such algorithms are created for the purpose of a real system. Uh, if you connect algorithms um, on uh, digital duplicates, uh, you can get algorithms uh, that will work exactly on a real system. Uh, in a sense, digital uh, duplicate uh, is a model of a real-time system uh, that provided a virtual representation of physical assets. Um, in the next slide, you can see um, advantages of using digital model of duplicates and the facts, uh, factors uh, that should be uh, considered before uh, its implementation. Uh, some of advantages are operation assessments uh, of risks and um, production time, uh, improving interaction or within teams, uh, intelligent services, uh, improving digital uh, decision decision making process, and uh, uh, remote real time uh, motivation. Uh, in addition, digital duplicate. Uh, uh, is not limited to collecting data, updating during product development and manufacturing, uh, but uh, continues to uh, collect uh, and analyze information uh, throughout the life cycle uh, of um, a real object. Uh, you example using uh, Internet of Things devices. Factors to consider before implementation digital duplicates in virtual reality you um, can see in um, this slide. Uh, some of these factors is um, update uh, data security uh, photos, team training, and data quality management. Um, future, uh, futures uh, of the implementation of project um, uh, involving during duplicates in terms in virtual reality in terms uh, of stages uh, are disclosed in um, set table. Uh, there are uh, four stages uh, of the project. Uh, first, technical. Second, financial. Third, terms of design uh, with the um, participation of digital uh, duplicates. And the last, uh, improving the quality of design. Digital duplicate can be uh, through as a virtual uh, prototype uh, of a real object uh, or processes uh, that contain uh, all the data about it, including history and information about the current stage. The criteria for digital duplicates are given in Table 4. Uh, these uh, categories are duplicate, uh, prototype and aggregate uh, double. Success uh, scenarios for the in-production of digital duplicate technology 
in different sectors of the economy are presented in next slide. The um, unlimited goal of digital duplicate in manufacturing industry uh, is to create a closed feedback uh, loop between virtual and real production through the use of the right digital infrastructure. Due to this uh, connection, the duplicate characterizing uh, of um, real production allows uh, uh, to develop an optimization scenarios in virtual production. After uh, successful modeling and implementation of these scenarios, the cycle begins again. Some of the successful experience um, in Ukraine, uh, we can see in uh, the energy sector, uh, sphere of uh, hospitality and service, uh, urban environment, uh, retail and uh, health care. Uh, in conduction, it is um, was noted that uh, new technologies help companies reduce costs, increase productivity and uh, efficiency, as well as uh, optimize uh, maintenance. Uh, in particular, uh, it is the technology of digital duplicates uh, uh, in uh, combination with the tools and machine learning and um, artificial intelligence allows uh, to uh, achieve this without um, promising workforce uh, with the connect uh, digital technology makes uh, it possible not to stop the line to uh, test a new element. Therefore, um, for manufacturers, the technology of digital duplicate is important not only to improve efficiency, but also to bring the product to market faster. Thanks for your attention. Uh, very nice presentation. Uh, uh, thank you for contribution your research in our uh, conference. Uh, any questions from audience? Okay. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for nice your presentation. Thank you, uh, uh, thank you for again once again. So. There is no any paper today. Uh, we are completed today paper presentation. Uh, so last I uh, again, thanks for uh, participation in our uh, conference. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Okay. 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 Uh, no, hello. Uh, you can conclude the session now. Uh, very, um, thank you for all particip uh, participants. Uh, they are nice, value, uh, very valuable uh, uh, research uh, topic they presented. Uh, uh, thank you for everybody. Uh, and thank you all. Okay, we can, uh, we can uh, leave now. Okay, bye. Okay, we can. Bye, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.